has to do exactly with rainfall, so let's get to that next. It's water is the most deadly aspect of tropical systems, not winds. Explain. Yeah, I think this, again, it comes back to this. I think wind is what's the sort of telegenic, sort of sexy thing to present on TV when you see the TV meteorologist standing out there on the beach holding on to a stop sign or something. Uh, but we know from numerous studies that water is what kills people in hurricanes and tropical storms, whether that be from storm surge or from the freshwater flooding that comes from the rainfall. Um, I don't think the storm surge was much of an issue in this particular storm out west, although I did see some people riding some pretty gnarly waves out there. Um, but I do think that the rainfall, I saw pictures of people driving through flooded roadways. That's one of the main ways that we lose lives. Uh, but again, these people aren't accustomed to that type of flooding. But even here on the East Coast, where I am in Georgia or Florida, where you are on the East Coast in New York, people still make bad decisions when it comes to water and flooded roadways. So that's why I always emphasize that it's the rain, it's the water in these storms that's most deadly. And yet you can't always ascertain that from the category of the storm. Remember Houston and Hurricane Harvey in 2017, uh, 50 plus inches of, of rainfall, a devastating storm for Houston, and most of that rain fell while it was a tropical storm. So that's why I'm always sort of put up the cross of the neck. No, it's not just the tropical storm. Tropical storms can produce quite a bit of rainfall. Some of my own research here at the University of Georgia has shown that the tropical storms or the weaker storms can be the most prolific rain producers. To piggyback off your point, Southern California over the past 24 hours has experienced mudslides, flooding, and power outages. So as a meteorologist, what of those three concerns you the most? Well, I'm always concerned about the flooding, uh, but the, the most intense rainfall is the five to eight inches that I've seen route in the higher elevation. So that certainly will lead to mudslides and landslides. So certainly people living in those uh, the, at higher elevation are in danger. But I'm always concerned about flooding because people just let their guard down when it comes to flooding. Uh, I, I think they are, for whatever reason, scared of winds and tornadoes and hurricane winds. They see flooding as something that they can deal with because they understand rain. And so uh, if there are flooded roadways, and I imagine there are this uh, Monday uh, here in Southern California and in some other parts of the desert Southwest, I just hope that people are taking that seriously. You, you, you didn't mention, but I, I'll mention it. There was also our, our earthquake uh, in, uh, in that region as well. And I, some of us are speculating that maybe the lubrication from all of that rainfall could have sort of, uh, you know, triggered some aspects of that. Now, we can't say that conclusively. In fact, it be, would be irresponsible to say so. But there are studies that do show uh, evidence that a lot of rainfall can trigger Cal, uh, uh, hurricane, I'm sorry, earthquakes in places like China or California. But again, that's very speculative at this point. But to, to get back to your question, I'm most concerned with this particular storm about people go, going out too early, maybe trying to drive through flooded roadways. I mean, I think most of the rain has ended in that region, but it will be a day or so before people can kind of get back to normal. I saw some pr pretty awe-inspiring pictures, Brittany, I don't know if you've seen these, of Dodger Stadium uh, underwater, or most of it underwater, or in the surrounding parking lots and everything. I know the raining there is just monstrous, but I do want to get back to the earthquake that uh, Southern California did experience during that flood. So are you saying, or what evidence suggests that this was more of a freak accident, or is this a chain reaction? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, and I, I can't say anything specifically about the relationship between the rainfall and this particular earthquake. But I did use it as a teachable moment to write in Forbes, uh, showing that there are several studies uh, in the scientific literature that have linked earthquakes to heavy rainfall. Uh, again, I am not saying here on the Forbes broadcast <laughs> that this tropical storm caused that earthquake. That is not what I'm saying at all. But I am showing that there is scientific plausibility in the literature that heavy rain events can trigger earthquakes. And so I think people over time will continue to look at that study. So I, I just wanted to use that as a teachable moment. Uh, but it certainly was a unique day, Brittany, to look on a weather map and see a tropical storm sitting over Los Angeles 
in an earthquake. That's, that's just a, I'm pretty sure people's alert systems are going off for various reasons in, this, in that region. And by the way, if you're listening or watching this, please make sure you have your wireless emergency alert system enabled on your cell phones. That, that's very important. Oftentimes people do disable those. And in a time like that, yesterday in Southern California, it was very important to have that on.